Hi, this is Arun Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. And today we have with us Justin Graham, VP of Products at Docker. Justin, it's uh, good to see you again. Not in person, but still good to see you. Yes, still great to see you again. I think last time was uh, was KubeCon Barcelona, so in person. So we'll we'll try this time over uh, over video. Uh, if you look at Docker's evolution over years, uh, I mean, when Docker came into existence. You guys were solving a specific problem uh, with containers, you know, and that kind of, you know, totally transformed the industry. But in today's world, if you just fall forward, uh, there are so many different things happening. Service mesh is there, you know, microservices, edge computing. So I just want to understand, you know, what does all of that mean for Docker today and what is Docker today? Yeah, really, really good question. So um, we, our journey to this point that we're in today uh, sort of culminated in November uh, when we uh, refocused the company on developer tools and developer workflow. And the specific place where we are hearing from our customers that they need help is at the place where source code management stops and uh, production runtime of containerized applications begin. Uh, in between, in that middle portion, we we hear from our customers that there's a lot of different options, a lot of different choices, a lot of different things to stitch together. And in many cases, they're writing a lot of their own custom code to accomplish that. Um, and they're asking and saying, hey, can Docker help here in some way? So that's where we're going to focus. Uh, since you uh, kind of, you know, sh shed some weight, you know, and you sold Docker Enterprise to, to Mirantis, uh, what is, I would not use the word left at Docker, but what, what what value is still there at Docker from the project's perspective and the, from the product's perspective so that we can understand how developers can leverage these technologies? Yeah, really good question. I, I think one of the, the, the great things we realized in that process was that the, the Docker prior to November of 19 was really two companies operating under one roof, you know, an enterprise company selling an enterprise container pl uh, platform runtime. Um, and a developer tools and workflow company selling that through Docker Hub. Um, so with the sale of Docker Enterprise to Mirantis, uh, the refocused Docker that's moving forward uh, still has ownership of three core areas. The first is Docker Desktop, um, which includes uh, the packaging of a number of primitives like the Docker CLI, the Docker Engine, and Docker Compose. Um, the second is Docker Hub, uh, which is public and private repositories, uh, verified content and images, um, as well as um, some team management and representation features uh, and integrations with companies like Bitbu Atlassian, Bitbucket, and GitHub. And then the third um, is our open source projects, which are primarily driven through those prior two products. Um, so I mentioned the Docker Engine and Compose before, um, but things like uh, Notary, uh, Docker Registry, uh, and, uh, and other open source projects um, that we uh, give back to the community uh, in order in order to move everyone forward. So all of those three things are what the Refocus Docker um, has and, and is continuing to move forward. Um, millions of users using those things um, and actual uh, millions of dollars of revenue being generated as well. Right, let's go back to the first question that we t t talked about. Uh, uh a lot of technologies coming at, you know, there are a lot of paradigms coming in DevOps, DevSecOps, Ops, so much is happening in the industry. Uh, what are the, some of the core pain points that you see developers still face today that you want to address? R really good question. And I, I, I think we, we sort of, as we've been listening and, and doing our research, we, we, we can sort of couch this into a few cohorts, right? So, you know, let's take cohort one, which is a development team um, that may be working for uh, a smaller company uh, or a startup um, that may not have, you know, a lot of resources like a separate infrastructure team or a separate operations team or a separate test team. You know, the developers are responsible for everything um, from writing the code to packaging it, getting it tested and, and deployed and run. Um, those, those developers and those development teams are, are, are really needing help and in setting up all of those pipelines and managing those, uh, the, all those integrations and the construction of those pipelines from source code management to public cloud deployment um, in, in a very efficient, easy, simple way. And then I think if you, um, if you sort of roll it forward 
all the way to potentially development teams that are part of a larger organization at a larger company, um, they have a, a different set of issues, which which has to do with consistency uh, of what you know what you code or what you're testing is is it really what you're coding and testing? Um, you know what happened if you make an update? Where are all of the downstream dependencies um, of those updates to your code or to a package? Um, in, in a very complex environment. So um, all of that complexity, regardless of level of maturity, exists within that that middle of, uh, of what we call code to cloud, which is where we're going to be placing our focus. Uh, since you know we are in a totally different phase, we are in 2020, and Docker is also kind of you know uh, uh, changing its strategy and focus. So I also I'm also curious, you know, uh, beyond technology, I also want to understand how important is ecosystem for Docker, and how do you plan to engage with a lot of partners, a lot of players, a lot of competitors in the market to just kind of move this whole movement even further. Yeah, really good question. Um, so so I'll start with with first just the ethos and philosophy, right? We, we very much want to align ourselves with the success of our customers and, and those being developers and development teams. So as, as, they, as developers and development teams win, we win. Um, so part of that ethos in delivering on that ethos is understanding that we obviously can't build everything here, right? So we are inviting um, conversations on partnerships um, and integrations, and, you know, sort of starting with the two that we already have, which is with Atlassian, Bitbucket, and uh, in GitHub uh, for webhooks and, and triggers. Um, we think that there's the opportunity for many, many more partnerships across security, CI, um, CD, uh, and, and other areas, because our goal is to help the developer get that, sti that wholly stitched together robust um, set of pipelines from code to cloud in the way that most benefits them, um, and we see the, the 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 you know Docker as a as a great uh, nexus to start there, given um, given Docker Hub as a registry and Docker Desktop and the CLI as great interfaces. Um, but you know, there's plenty of value to be driven through partnerships and, and potentially you know across you know both those areas. Um, so we are inviting any and all conversations for partnerships and integrations in that perspective. Um, and that's going to be core to our ethos um, and how we operate moving forward. What is Docker doing uh, to kind of, you know, kind of uh, so that the customer base or ecosystem doesn't lose, lose confidence in Docker? Yeah, it's a really good question. I think the, the, the first is, um, you know, you're not going to see us doing a lot of responding to um, you know, to things, you know, to, to, to sentiments and things publicly more. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do through action, listening, you know, starting with listening to our current, our current customers. Um, well, one of the things that we're going to, that we're doing to sort of invite that transparency and trust is um, launching a public roadmap um, um, through a blog I'm writing on March 10th, um, which we, which serves two purposes. One is um, it invites our customers and the community to be involved in, in in how we you know deliver them value. What's most what's most needed? Where are the biggest gaps? What are the highest priorities? Um, and we're taking that feedback directly. And then second is we're being transparent. Um, what are we working on? What are we investigating? What are we writing the code on? Um, so that our customers can see what we're working on and then comment and and, and provide feedback uh, on that. So um, I think the combination of both of those things. Um, obviously rooted in you know listening and working backwards from our customers um, is the um, is the approach we're going to take uh, back on the partnerships piece you know we are more we are inviting those conversations at, at all three stages of that workflow right so you know on the source code end of the workflow on the middle part of the code to cloud workflow as well as the runtime uh, uh, workflow. Um, so we, we would love to have any and all those conversations. And I think lastly, um, you know, we want developers and development teams to consume on their terms. Um, so the business model that we're putting forth is, is monthly subscriptions that are very SaaS like that, that many developers and development teams should be used to with other development tools or workflow tools that they use. Um, so it will, you know, our business model will be a, a you know, SaaS subscriptions um, in that respect. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Justin, so much for taking your time out and talking to us today and kind of explaining, you know, 
your roadmap, where Docker is heading in 2020. And, you know, uh, good luck, best wishes. Uh, and as I said earlier, I would love to sit down and talk to you again at some point. Thank you. Absolutely. Look forward to it.